anytime someone says activation exercise, it's a, not always, but mostly code for, I never went to school for this shit. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Let's talk about the most common Hollywood training mistakes that I don't want you to make. Because the Hollywood people, they have lots of money and fame. But what do you have except for white walls and no one to love you? No, wait, I'm talking about myself again. In any case, here's the thing. We've done uh, a bunch of videos and reviews of various Hollywood celebrity training, and some of it's really good, and much of it is really, really terrible. Let's zone in on what kind of commonalities that I've noticed, and probably you have as well, with what is it that makes these sessions so goddamn terrible. Not always, but sometimes. And again, as always, I mean nothing but karmic love to all the trainers and celebrities involved. Um, we all fuck up every now and again. And then sure as shit, I don't do everything perfectly. So I'm sure there's someone doing a video on me right now about how terrible my fashion sense is. Uh, just kidding, no one does videos about me because I'm irrelevant. Ready? Three, two, one. I have 11 mistakes that I have noticed Hollywood trainers make with their clients. The first is excessively long warm-ups. Warming up is not complicated. You do a set of 12, you rest, you do a set of eight, you rest, you do a set of four, the weights get heavier every time. Then you do your first work set, second work set, third work set, et cetera, and you're into your program. You can do a little bit of cardio, stair climber, step mill, uh, treadmill for maybe five minutes before, maybe even less, and then you're totally good to go. Any more warming up than that is like something's wrong with you medically and you need to be with a physical therapist before you enter a personal training situation. Number two, mobility work to nowhere. A lot of these folks that train Hollywood celebrities talk about mobility all the time. Mobility is just your ability to exert strength in various positions of flexibility. Flexibility multiplied by strength equals mobility. I don't know what the fuck this has to do with looking like Batman. I'm sure the trainers don't know either. If you're in the gym to get results to be stronger and cooler, just do full range of motion lifting, especially accentuating that deep stretch. You'll get all the mobility you need for almost everything in life and then some. Overfocus on mobility is great for people that need mobility, like gymnasts. And yep, that's about it. Next, number three, activation exercises that are different from the working exercises. You'll see people do a plank to activate their core for squats and then do squats. First of all, as a PhD in sports science, I know I'm waving the flag of accomplishment. It's fucking icky, but bear with me. I'm not entirely sure what an activation exercise does. And I'm not just saying that for facetious comedic effect. I actually don't know. And I am a little facetious because I know what it can't be, and that rules out anything that it can be. Anytime someone says activation exercise, it's a, not always, but mostly code for, I never went to school for this shit. Because if you bring that shit to a rigorous university setting where they teach you formal sports science, they're going to be like, what the fuck does that mean? Come up on the board and draw us a diagram. When you fail to do that because it's a make-believe term that means nothing, people will make fun of you quietly and you'll notice it the fuck down. That's how my first year of Hogwarts went anyway. Activation exercises, I'm not really sure what it is they do. We call those warm-ups in sports science. They can do really well. The best warm-up slash activation exercise for the exercise is... The exercise done with lighter weights, it allows you to work on the same techniques you're going to be doing, the same cadences, the same positions, activating the same identical muscles in the same patterns. So just do that. I'm not sold on the activation shit if you can't tell. Number four, unstable movements. What is the enhancement effect you get of doing a squat on a BOSU ball versus on the ground? I'll tell you that effect. Something like half of your fastest twitch, most growth-prone motor units simply never turn on because when your body assesses through its nervous system that the situation is too unstable, it won't allow you to do full force movements. It's a safety thing. If you try to jump up as high as you can on a huge sheet of ice, you will fall on your ass and fucking crack, crack your hip open. Your body kind of knows that through its evolutionary wisdom, and it just won't let you do it. So if it senses instability, you actually can't jump high, which means you can't activate your leg musculature a lot, which means for hypertrophy purposes, which require you activating the fuck out of every last little bit of your muscle, there's just a lot left on the table. Unstable moves through study after study after study do not allow high motor unit recruitment 
full muscle activation, and thus are inferior for every kind of result you can think of but for I really want to get good at squatting on a BOSU ball, which last I checked has diddly dick to do with fucking anything. Next, number five, mixing in corrective and posture exercises with stimulative exercises. Guys, pretty much the only reason Hollywood celebs go to trainer is that they can look a certain way for the role. I don't give a fuck what Batman's mobility is. I want him to have Batman pecs and Batman arms so that he can make me feel Batman safe and Batman hug me and in a totally straight way. I don't want to smell his chest. Maybe it's some aftershave and I don't know. Maybe that smells good to me. In any case, again, sports science PhD facetiousness coming in. Corrective, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Don't worry. Most of the people advocating for it don't know either. Posture, I'm not so sure there's a dependable set of exercises that can improve posture, and the best DPTs will tell you the same thing. So, first of all, it's nothing to do with anything, and second of all, it's not even we're not even so sure any of this is having an effect. Number six, they avoid very often the hardcore compound basics that slab fucking pounds of beef. They work for great grandma, work for grandma. Mom did it. Why the fuck aren't you doing it? For example, they'll take something and replace it with a fancier looking version that is less stimulative. You will rarely see celebrity trainers program stiff-legged deadlifts for their clients with a barbell, just like grandma used to do. Big fucking hanging hamstrings. You ever see grandma, that fucking, you know, portrait on your on your mom's desk? And you're like, damn, grandma had some fucking hamstring sweep. What the fuck? And your mom's like, yeah, she was fucking stiff-legged deadlifting, 495 for reps, fucking with chewing tobacco in her mouth. Fucking grandma. Great depression type of shit. What do we see uh, people using with celebrity clients? Single leg, kettlebell, deadlifts. Yeah, it's a fine movement, but I thought celebrities were busy and needed to get in shape fast. we got to use that real shit, folks. If you want to be jacked, don't do the shit they do. Do hardcore shit. Next, number seven. You just don't have a very high effort, relative effort per se. Relative effort is the technical scientific term that Dr. Brad Schoenfeld uses, among others, to indicate proximity to failure generally. How hard are you trying in any set relative to how hard you could try? Phrasing it that way, you immediately see, once you've seen enough celebrity training videos, like they're kind of just going through the motions. You're going to go through the motions, you're going to get not so great results. You're going to get some, but you're not going to get the best results. Try. Fucking try. Here's the thing. A lot of celebrity trainers, they don't want to push their Hollywood actors. They want to get them hurt, which is totally understandable. But getting hurt is not a matter of usually going closer to failure. It's more of a matter of are you warming them up properly? Are they in generally good physical condition? Do they have good technique? And are you not using excessively heavy weights? To put it another way, if you put a celebrity's 20 rep max on the bar, they're almost certainly not going to get hurt. What they're going to get is pain, the pain of getting closer to failure as lactic acid builds. That's going to hurt them in not an injury way, but it hurts their, um, it offends their sensibilities. And they might not come back to train with you because they want to pussyfoot around and just get in decent shape for the next role. They're going to hire someone else. I totally get that. But since you're not a soft ass Hollywood celebrity, most of them are actually really good people and hard as fuck. But the ones we review, a lot of times it's just not their best work. So fucking try people, try. You're not going to get Gal Gadot's body by fucking doing send in reps. So I've never actually seen Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, okay. Finally, someone corrected me. It's Gal Gadot, right? Because she's Israeli or whatever. Fucking hot as fuck. Um, <laughs> Israeli girls, what's up? I'm married, JK. Get the fuck out of here. But alternate universe, what up? Um, I know, like, uh, Scott, how many uh, Hebrew words do I know? Shalom, which means hello, maybe goodbye, and also like peace. Uh, and a shalosh, which means three. And uh, ken, which means yes. Lo, which means no. And... And you guys, when I went to Hebrew school back when I was like seven, I had such fucking insane ADD. I don't know what the fuck was going on. That's all I remember. I know a couple of prayers. In any case, Gal Gadot, don't be upset at me. You're the shit. But um, folks, train hard. God damn it. That's all I'm saying. Number eight, low per muscle per week frequency. I see female celebrities hitting their pecs once a week. Girl, your pecs are going to heal two days later. What the fuck are the other five days for? Not getting big pecs, that's for damn sure. And the last few days, your pecs might even recede in size a little bit. You're missing out a ton of opportunity. If you're serious about hypertrophy training, two to four days a week per muscle every week, that's how you fucking get the best results. Don't train your biceps once a week. Train them at least twice, maybe three times, maybe even four times. Whatever you can recover from, that's what you do. Once a week, if you're a huge pro bodybuilder, maybe it takes you that long to recover. 
Scott, what's that one girl's name? Brie Larson? Girl, it doesn't take you a week to recover from the shit. Number nine. There seems to be almost no emphasis on tracking what they're doing and progressing them through it. I didn't see anyone write anything down. I didn't see anyone use the RP hypertrophy app, link in description, in order to make sure that what they're doing today is a little bit harder next time, is a little bit harder next time, is a little bit harder next time, and then deload. No one's writing anything down. It just seems random. And it is random. I've seen a ton of trainers coach their clients like that. It's not optimal practice. I mean, these are fucking Hollywood people. They need to be in shape. It's a huge matter of money of how good of shape they're in, of how much the movie has an impact. You would think these people track. Some of them, I'm sure, do. Some of them are great. But but a lot of them just fucking just don't do it. And that's just not being very sciencey and very effective. Number 10, a lot of them confuse strength work and work capacity work for actual body composition, which is to say hypertrophy training. You're going to have, uh, you know, some of these trainers train their, their celebrity clients and they say, well, like we're working on strength here, core strength. Why? Are you fucking kidding me? Who cares? I, have you guys ever seen a celebrity in the movies and you're like, hmm, yeah, I wish he was stronger. How do you know? Everything's a fucking prop. It's just appearance. And if you want to train for appearance, you got to train like that. Don't go doing tons of strength work thinking it's going to somehow magically enhance your appearance. Don't go doing work capacity works. And a lot of the stuff I've seen is they get two kettlebells and just walk around the gym with the shit. They call it work on a work capacity. Work capacity for what? In sports science, work capacity is never just said by itself. It's work capacity for something that matters. What matters if you can fucking hold a bunch of kettlebells and walk around the gym? Are you getting ready for fucking travel with your suitcases? Nonsense of the highest order. You in the gym to focus on a certain thing, you train that thing. Don't worry about all the other shit. You don't have to be a fucking jack of all trades master of none. And lastly, using fads that were clearly debunked fucking generations ago. For example, lots of celebrities are using the vibration platform. You stand on there, it goes up and down, you think things are happening and they're not. The vibration platform is amazing for acute flexibility enhancement. If you stretch while on a vibration platform, it's almost as good as stretching while you're high as fuck. You're just way more flexible. How? It's the nervous system. That's the answer. What other benefits does it give you? Hmm. No way. Yeah, none at all. So fucking stop using it. It also costs a trillion dollars. Why the fuck is it still being used? I know the answer. Celebrities, they need to feel like shit is working and they need to get all the advanced science. You put them on the vibration plate. You put them on the fucking BOSU ball. You lie about them, about some core work bullshit. Ease up on the training. Cryo chamber after. They're like, oh man, my trainer is amazing. Because they have no idea how the fuck they're categorizing the trainer whatsoever. TLDR. Taking all of this anger and frustration I have. Talking to my psychologist about it. Coming back to you guys and trying to sum it all up. Pick effective movements that stimulate the muscles that you want to grow or preserve. Progress with them slowly in strength over weeks, training each muscle two to four times per week. You're going to get some fucking results. Fancier lifting usually gets you neutral or worse results, not better results. Most Hollywood trainers are babying their clients. You're not a fucking baby. You're hard as nails. Go train hard as fuck. Every Monday we release a training video. You can get an inspiration from there how hard these guys go. Whether or not you download the hypertrophy app, link in description below, get in the gym and fucking make some noise. Hollywood motherfuckers. Lock up out of here. See you guys next time. Training for muscle growth is never going to be the same.